Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We had an absolutely phenomenal year from the Yukon Huskies. They played brilliant basketball from beginning to end. The last six, seven, eight games, whatever it was, winning by double digits, absolutely unbelievable to beat good teams that have different varieties across the board in such a dominant fashion is absolutely remarkable. Shows just their ingenuity, their brilliancy. Absolutely, absolutely love it. We're going to take a deeper dive into look at what UConn did to dominate Purdue, beating them by 15 or whatever the end score was. If you think you might be interested in a further UConn, that's going to come out next week on how they actually got to this point, or you'd be interested in NBA playoffs and a deeper dive on those games, feel free to subscribe. But let's go. The first thing that I believe sets everything else in motion is, uh, most crucially, how do you defend Zach Eadie? Zach Eadie, obviously one player of the year, I think back-to-back -back years, the most dominant player on the court. Everything depends on how you defend him. So one of the big things I talked about going into is that teams have to double aggressively. However, the one thing I said, or the one thing that needs to be an asterisk, is Klingon is maybe the only other post player in America who plausibly has a decent chance of defending ED one-on-one -on -one because of his size, because of his physicality, because of his length. The majority of teams cannot do this. Okay? So what UConn chose to do is Klingon A, shaded him to force him to shoot over his left shoulder or forced him to essentially try and prevent him shooting over his left shoulder, making that as difficult as possible because ED is right-handed, and forced him to shoot the ball as far out as possible while everyone else can stay home. So essentially what UConn said is you are going to have to beat Klingon one-on-one -on -one inside the post in order to beat us as a team. And frankly, this is semi-controversial, but I think Zach Eady actually played pretty well. He shot 60% and he shot on very, very high volume and he frankly still played really, really solid. However, what UConn was able to do is they limited guard action. Okay. So in this situation, what they are saying is they are saying, we are not going to take this bait. We are not going to go with Braden Smith. We are going to stay home with Zach Eady, and we are going to say, yes, shoot this floater off balance moving to your right, and we're going to box out and make sure you don't get any open threes or Zach Eady layups at the rim slash dunks at the rim. The reason they did this is because Purdue relies on Zach Eady to such an extent that I believe the rest of their team essentially is limited if you force them into difficult decisions. Okay? If you force them into difficult shots, Purdue, I believe, is not that great of a team unless they can get it consistently to Zach Eady and let that create the open shots for them. So again, we see Braden Smith going downhill. What is UConn doing? They're not sending aggressive help. They're saying play one-on-one, -on -one, and we have the better guards, and we are going to defend them overall. And while these last two examples, Braden Smith made really good shots. Those are difficult, difficult shots. And the issue is, while they made them in those situations, these are like the highlights or whatever, they overall, Zach Eady non-shots, they shot 9 for 29 from 2. 9 for 29. And they shot 1 for 7 from 3. UConn's game plan forced the guards to make difficult shots proved to be effective because the Purdue guards struggled one-on-one -on -one against really elite defense, which is what UConn has. But then let's shift to what UConn did on offense. And this is the thing that I probably like the most is, again, UConn's whole goal is essentially to say, our guards are better than yours. Yes, Klingon is really good. Yes, you can guard one-on-one. -on -one. But I believe their whole fundamental plan was we're going to show you that our guards can beat your guards. And frankly, they were able to. Because UConn has elite shooting, you make one mistake going around a screen, they are going to punish you with great shooting from the perimeter, which means that you can't make a mistake if you're on. The other big concept that's crucial is who's the one that's setting the screen right here. Klingon is the one setting the screen. Why is it crucial that Klingon setting the screen? Because Zach Eady, you is essentially the least mobile player on the floor. You have to take advantage of Zach Eady on defense. Teams that did not take advantage of Zach Eady lost the ball games. The reason this is taking advantage of Zach Eady is because there's no help on this. It's simply leaving a guard to go through a screen, and it's putting him, putting Jones in a very, very difficult situation. And Cam Spencer makes him pay. Again, I talked about in my How to Beat UConn video that essentially the big, I think, whenever they're guarding, has to be down here, down low. 
what happens when the big is not there? Essentially, what you're saying is this huge amount of space, Newton has one-on-one -on -one with a guard. Who's going to win this battle? Newton. Newton's going to win that battle. That's what UConn said, and that's what proved to be true. An excellent time back cut, no rim protection, and an easy finish at the rim for UConn. And then one of the, I think, absolutely most crucial things here that is probably more underrated than people realize is what happened with the guards when a shot went up for UConn. Purdue nowhere near pushes in transition like UConn does. They know they don't have to really worry about transition. Maybe a little bit, you got to be aware. But in a huge amount, because they rely on ED so much, you don't have to worry as much in transition. So when a shot goes up, what can you do? You can go for offensive rebounds. They got rebound after rebound. And the issue is UConn is such an elite shooting team. If you give them an offensive rebound, you're going to get an open look. Look, Caravan's got his hand up. Spencer's about to be open. Newton is open. There are so many threats on the perimeter. You cannot give them offensive rebounds. Every time when you see a shot go up, you saw Caravan, you saw Klingon, you saw Castle. All would go for open rebounds. Okay. When you have Zach Eady step up here to try and be a little bit of a rim protector, he leaves his feet. Okay. UConn's like, okay. That means that he is no longer capable of getting a rebound. You have Lawyer versus Klingon. You got to be kidding me. Klingon's going to win that battle 100%. And then you have nobody in front of Castle. Hey, Castle's just chilling there. Castle's there and ready to jump up. That ball goes up. UConn is the one that's closest. UConn gets the rebound because Edie had to commit on the rim protection. Again, we're seeing Spencer create off the drive. As soon as that happens, there's help, which means that the guards are going to have a difficult time boxing out. Where does Caravan instantly go? Shot goes up. He is getting inside position. He is much larger and probably, frankly, more athletic than Lawyer. He is in optimal position because Edie has to pay so much attention to Klingon. That gives one-on-one. -on -one. Caravan is able to get the rebound and kick out. So UConn is so aware. Again, as the second shot goes up, okay, Zach Edie, again, he instantly goes to Klingon. Okay, because they're so worried about Klingon, Again, another rebound right to Castle. UConn is aggressive going for the rebounds, taking advantage of Edie being occupied, and absolutely brilliant, beautiful basketball. UConn played an absolutely tremendous game of basketball. I believe they attacked the guards and tried to essentially say, we're going to take Zach Edie out of it as much as possible and just let our guards beat you one-on-one, -on -one, which is what I believe they were ultimately able to do. And they put Zach Edie in difficult situations. And UConn's overall superior shooting, athletic ability, and driving. And frankly, their defense is what really won this national championship. Overall, a great game. Really enjoyed watching it. UConn is a tremendous basketball team. I look forward to them next year. I look forward to them watching them as much as possible. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe. But ultimately, make sure you have a blessed rest of your day.